One of the popular workshop topics as of late is the ability to use digital rubrics with your Google Classroom. And this is brought to us by the lovely folks at New Visions for Public Schools uh, who created Doctopus and then the Gubrick add-on. Now today I'm going to be doing everything within Google Chrome. You need to use Google Chrome in order to have access to the Gubrick extension which we'll talk about once we get to that step. So first off we're going to navigate into our Google Classroom and then find the class that we want to create an assignment to use the Gubrick for. I'm, I can go in, add in the assignment as I normally would, add in a template if I wanted to, and then assign the, assign the assignment to my class. As you can see here for my example assignment, I've created an assignment, attached the essay template that I want every student to get a copy of, and then I've also created my rubric, which I've attached to this assignment. Now let's first off take a look at the rubric. When you create a rubric, you do so within the Google Sheets application within your Google Drive. The key components here are that A1 has to be empty, the column A has the topics that you are grading them on, B through however many columns have the number of points that you're going that you are going to be awarding, and then the content within the table itself are the criteria that you're going to be grading them on. Notice that I've paid very little attention to the formatting. At this point, all I'm worried about is the actual content of the table. So we've attached it to our assignment, so that way every student can view it. They are not getting editing rights, they're just able to look at it to see how their assignment is going to be graded. Now you'll notice that I already have one student who's completed the assignment and three students that are not done. In order to get the next step of this process to really work all that well, you need to have at least one student having started the assignment. It does not mean that they needed to have passed it in, um, but you do need to have at least one student engage the assignment. So if you are doing an assignment, just have one of your students in the class go in, open the assignment, and start it. Now once you've done that, I'm going to navigate to the About tab of my class because I'm going to go into my Google Drive itself. Once I found my folder for this class from my Google Classroom, I'm going to select the assignment folder that I'm going to create the rubric for. You'll notice I've already done it a couple times, so we're going to do another one. So I'm going to create a new Google Sheet within this folder. Logistically, my rationale behind doing this is that if I were to go back in and need to pull up the grades for this assignment, it's logically in the right place with all the other assignments that, um, that I am grading. So for me, this method makes sense. Now my rubric itself is located in my drive and it's located in a folder of all my rubrics in order to make it easier to find later. Now I'm going to rename my Google Sheet. Okay, and if you have not accessed the add-ons menu yet, I highly recommend that you check it out because the add-ons menu is available in all the Google products within your Google Drive and they add additional functionality to the tools that you use already. For us, we're going to go to get on add-ons and then you are going to look for Doctopus. Now if you don't see Doctopus, then you may not be in Sheets because Doctopus is a Sheets specific add-on. Once you find Doctopus, click on the plus symbol, such as what you see here, the plus free symbol, to add it into your account. Once you've added it once, you will not have to add it again. Then once you've added it, you're going to come in and then launch Doctopus. And as it works, you're going to notice that it will load up a toolbar on the right hand side of your screen once it is done loading. Now New Visions for Public Schools is all for public schools, for teachers, so the process itself is very well documented and really easy to follow. So I'm not going to give you written directions on to how to use Doctopus because Doctopus itself will tell you how to use it. So step one, select our roster. When we click the drop down menu, we're going to choose to ingest Google CR assignment. And I know that that seems a little off-putting, um, but we could use Doctopus before we actually had Classroom. Doctopus is just integrating a little bit more with Classroom now in order to generate our roster out of our Classroom instead. So we'll ingest a Google Classroom assignment. We need to make sure that we are choosing the correct class. 
and then we are going to select the assignment which we wish to grade. So basically every time that we want to do an electronic rubric for an assignment we will have to create a new sheet and go through the Doctopus process for each assignment. Now you'll notice that it is picked up that there is one turned in file for this assignment and two that have not yet been turned in. If we'd only like to grade the assignments that are turned in right now we can ingest only the files that are turned in and click ingest. Now you'll notice that there are some tabs that are chugging in the background, some more information is being fed in, and we're good to go. Our Doctopus is all set up. We have one student that has submitted the assignment. You can basically ignore the next four tabs, uh, columns. This is a link to her actual Google document that she has turned in and she last edited it on November 4th. Now the Gubrick component. Gubrick is the Google version of a rubric, so also from New Vision Public Schools. So we're going to select Attach Gubrick, and then we are going to read through the directions. First off, you need to make sure that you have the Google Chrome extension installed if you haven't already. I can tell that I have it installed because it's this little eyeball up here in my toolbar, um, in my Omnibox of my browser. You then have to authorize your Gubrick web app, and if you haven't done that yet, it will it will tell you, it will warn you when you first go in to do your first Gubrick. And then you create your rubric in a new Google Sheet, which we've already done, and we looked at that earlier. Now keep in mind that this only works in the Chrome browser, and you really should not be using multiple accounts in one window. So if you're someone who toggles back and forth between your personal and your school Gmail accounts, then let's chat about how to separate the two. Um, Chrome user profiles are way better anyways. It will make your life infinitely more robust. So just check in with me and we can separate the two. So first off, we're going to select your rubric. Now, as I said, I already have all my rubrics in my drive, but I'm going to find the district writing rubric three to five. It's going to do some little bit more chugging on the background, and then it's going to give me a preview of what my rubric actually looks like. That looks good, so I'm going to attach the rubric to this assignment. Okay, we're noticing that some more stuff is happening on the top. Okay, so we're all set. So now we can access our assignment that we're going to run the Gubrick on through two different methods. We can come back into our classroom assignment and then we can access the done assignments here, expand the person that I'm grading, and then find the assignment. Or we can look at the spreadsheet that we've created, click on the link in the sheet, and it will open it from here. So either method will get you to the same place because you've assigned the Gubrick to this assignment, you'll be able to grade it from either method. Once the assignment has loaded, this particular assignment I've already run the Gubrick on a couple different times, but I've been using different sheets every time. So when I first implement the Gubrick on this, it's going to show that we haven't graded this before, um, but you'll see down here at the bottom, I actually have a bunch of different rubrics already because I've been using this as my demonstration document. So when I'm ready to grade an assignment, I'm going to find my Gubrick eyeball up here in my toolbar. It's going to look for an associated rubric. It'll pull the rubric up and then I go through, grade the student. Okay, if I wanted to give them a partial grade, I can type in the partial grade and you'll notice that it grades it a little bit lighter and then selects both boxes. Um, and I can do any fractions of points within that. Okay, and once I go through and grade them all, down at the bottom I can also add in additional comments. And then if I wanted to email my responses to the student, then I could leave this box checked and it would email the responses to the student. Now because the student has turned in the document, I have the ability to paste the rubric into the document. If they had not yet turned it in, I can still do the rubric, but it will not paste it at the end because I don't have editing access. It would only let me email it to them. So I, if you're going to do this before the student has turned it in, I highly recommend emailing them the rubric. So we're going to say submit and paste a document. The little Gubrick eyeball will chugga chugga chugga. It has saved. 
and we can move on to our next student, which in this case I don't have another student that has turned this assignment in, so I'm just going to click off of it. And all the way at the bottom of this document, I have the rubric that I graded the student on. Okay, so it shows all their scores, it shows when I did the grading, and then it also gives them the comments at the very bottom. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. You can keep on going in and regrading it every time, so if they were to redo the assignment and resubmit it, you'll see that these are the last scores that were submitted and what time I submitted them, and then I can go back in and make the appropriate changes and then give them change my comments, send them a copy of my latest grades, and we're good to go. Okay, so this is really useful, especially for writing assignments. All right, then what happens? Well, what happens is we wind up with all the grades for our Gubric shown up on our Google Sheet. We see how many times I've graded it as well as my comments. Then over here in the grade column, you'll notice that it's blank. And at first, when I was first teaching how to use Gubric, I thought that this was going to give us a total, but in the end, it's not. And the reason being is that this can then be set up to be whatever num numeric calculation that you wish it to be. If you just want to do a basic sum of all of your grades, then we can do the sum function and tabulate all of our grades. And then if I wanted to give it, say, it's four, out of 24, so that would be out of 24 points. Okay, then we get a number, and then I can change it to be a percentage if I wanted a percentage grade. Okay, um, this is also useful if you wanted to weight one of your categories to be more than others. We could do basic algebra and create our own formula that's going to tabulate or weight, weight the assignments as we see fit. Okay. All right. And then we could do again, divide by 24. Okay. So it's up to you to figure out what formula you'd like in order to be your calculation for what their grade is. But for those of you that have asked me about weighting categories, that's how you can do it. Okay. So now what? We have our one graded. What do we do if we have other students that we need to bring in? The Doctopus panel over here on the right hand side, first off you do have the ability to toggle between an average score and, um, and showing the most recent score. Now obviously we're hoping that the most recent score is going to be their highest score, so if you're just looking for their highest score then that would be the ideal, um, or you can toggle it to be an average. You can also refresh the edits and counts, and when I do this, it actually is going to give us a couple other um, columns within this as well, which includes the word count, if that um, total mattered to you. And then the cool one is that we can also look for new submissions. Now, if this assignment had been due already and I wanted to pull in every assignment, whether they've finished it and turned it in or not, I can uncheck that box, look for new submissions, and in this case it will pull in an, an additional two or three documents depending on how many students have actually started this assignment. So an, an, another two teachers um, that, have com that have done this assignment during one of my workshops. Now it, this only will pull in the students that have actually started the assignment. Not every student may have started the assignment, so if you're seeing some students that are missing, then that's why, because they likely haven't started the assignment. Now you can send email feedback within the Doctopus add-on and when you come into here you'll see that all of these fields that you see up at the top are the keys that you can use within your email. So in this instance because the student's email address is collected from Google Classroom I can email them responses, I can give them feedback on whatever the file name was and the file name it's pulling from column G and then I can give them specific feedback um, about how to find their document by using some of the additional fields that we see up here and then click on send email and it will send every student an email. Okay, so that's a basic summary of how to use Gubrick and Doctopus with your Google Classroom. If you need to then transfer the grades from here into Infinite Campus or your other grading system, you need to do it manually from here. Um, you'll notice that the grades themselves do not transfer into Google Classroom. So if the Google Classroom grade matters to you or your students, then you would have to cross, cross post from the spreadsheet 
into Google Classroom here and then also into, in our case, Infinite Campus. So just keep that in mind as you move forward, but you're going to be looking for this document to get the grades for this assignment now. I hope that that makes sense. Do let me know if it doesn't. SimmonsClassroom.com. Thanks so much.